hello YouTube uh, how are you guys doing so in the last video we talked about some of the Reynolds stress terms so the Reynolds stress terms are in the X direction these are the ones where we have the average of the you know u velocities uh, fluctuating part of the u velocity product of u and v product of u and w then uh, yeah Okay, I think, yeah. So if we do it for the y direction, for example, so you have uh, u prime and v prime for the x direction. Okay, so I'm going to take this out. Yep, so v prime u prime for x, v prime v prime for y, v prime w prime for z. And then this is u prime and w prime. Alright. And then u prime, w prime for uh, x, w prime and v prime for y, w prime and w prime for z. Okay. So these are the Reynolds stress terms. And this is what we call the closure problem. The closure problem is closure problem is how do you find all these terms this row another uh, for example u prime v prime bar how do you find all these so it's not just this u prime v prime is the u prime uh, u prime square u prime w prime square all these all these things so um, how do you find this this is known as the closure problem it's central to turbulence modeling so um, first attempt at uh, at uh, this problem uh, is done by uh, Businesk. He's the first one who try and uh, tackle this problem. And this is from uh, one of the books uh, got on Kindle. Uh, it's a practical uh, practical approach to computational fluid dynamics. I can paste the link or rather just put the reference in the description below. So this is what Businesk uh, I don't know how to pronounce his name. Businesk actually, you know, formulated. So he basically got rid of these two, uh, you know, prime terms, and then he replaced it with some sort of, you know, average u velocity. So you have this, uh, you know, alternate equal to do go go into equation mode rho. So I'm gonna bracket u prime u prime. Okay. Well, u prime mu prime bar equals to mu underscore t partial u bar partial x minus 2 over 3 rho and k. So he postulates that uh, this uh, u prime mu prime bar can be expressed in some form of a constant. Okay, so this is uh, some kind of turbulent viscosity. And then this was some form of the turbulent... Uh, I mean average velocity shear and this uh, rho of course is density and then this k is actually some uh, some form of turbulent kinetic energy or some other constant okay so you just call these two constants this one is the, is the, uh, the turbulent viscosity and this one some people call it turbulent kinetic energy or whatever just call it another constant all right so you can see a similar pattern for rho v prime v prime. So it's I'm not gonna type it all out, though I can. Oh, I might as well type it out. So rho v prime v prime. Okay. So you can see the pattern emerging very similarly. So it's a v bar, and it's the same. There's a there's another k here. It may be a different k. Okay. Uh, or it could be the same if it's it's isotropic, you see. Okay, but I'll explain. You can ex uh, delve into that later. So you can imagine what the WW thing is. Alright. So WW will be rho W bar and Z over here. And that's how you formulate your equations. And now, if let's say the, the two letters are different, so rho u prime v prime bar 
So I'm just going to copy that new T partial V bar partial X plus partial U bar partial Y. So these are like some come kind of a some form of a shear stress kind of a term, right? So it's gonna be this turbulent uh, viscosity. Probably, you know, yeah, we can assume them to be the same or different. Uh, we won't make that assumption yet. But uh, yeah, so you can imagine. So one is uh, one's talking about v and x, and then this is u and y. So it's kind of inverse, right? We have one u velocity, which is velocity in the x direction, and this is the velocity in the y direction. So you can see how these two uh, interlink. So one will be the y velocity, average y velocity with the x direction. And this is the average x velocity in the y direction. So you can imagine all the other terms, pretty simple to do. Let's say you have a u prime and w prime, right? And then I'll do a bar there. And then what will it be? All right, so one of them will, be, will need to be the z velocity. So they'll be like that. The other one will need to be the x velocity. So this is that in a three dimension. So we can do the same permutation and combination. For example, vw. Uh, that will be slightly different as well. So this is the Boussinesque assumption. It basically gets rid of all these things that we don't really know how. Okay, how to find out. And then he says, okay, let's let's uh, put these terms here instead. Uh, I'm going to relate it to some uh, bulk fluid uh, property, such as uh, this uh, shear property. It's uh, some sort of average uh, velocity. It's not bulk fluid, sorry. It's uh, the average velocity at some point, the average velocity gradient. And then I'm going to put this, because uh, this is a Raynaud stress term, it's a bit like a shear stress kind of thing. That's why we are using this, this kind of formulation. So there's some uh, velocity gradient with respect to length. And then there's a constant of viscosity here. So if you remember what uh, shear stress was like, uh, so it's like tau equals to mu, for example, du dy, or partial u partial y. So you can see the similarities here and here as well. So, yeah. So these are, this is some of the model. And then uh, what you do is you do some experiments to find out maybe what u, mu of t is. And of course, we can use the isotropic assumption. What, what does that mean? Uh, whether you're talking about the x, y, or z direction, all the mu t's are the same. The mu t's are the same, right? Mu t is the same regardless of direction. That's isotropic. And then k is also the same. Which k am I talking about? It is this k. This k is the same regardless of direction. So is there a is there a general way to express all these things? Yes, if you look online. Okay, if you look online in uh, Wikipedia, you'll see this term here, minus rho u i prime u j prime. This is in a tensor form. So what it means basically, it's um, it's representing all of these terms because uh, it can be u in the x direction together or u in the y direction together, u in the z direction together or any combination of all these. And what is the Boussinesque relation? Right, so Boussinesque relation, turbulence. So yeah, we have this we have this kind of relation here. Can you see this? Some well, I'll just I'll just write this down. 
Okay, so isotropic is means this. And uh, if you look online, you will see some semblance of this, which will, will have some uh, confusion sometimes. Vi prime Vj prime the bar equals mu t. I'll just use a capital T there. Partial Vi bar partial x j so that's uh, some length coordinate in the j direction it can be a z or whatever it depends on what these velocities are referring to so if this is a velocity in the z direction this will be uh, a length coordinate in the z direction so v j bar partial x i okay and then what else we have this minus two thirds all right minus uh, two thirds k delta i j okay so this is the general form to express all of this so this is the general formula so you can see if that we, if we multiply everything throughout by density, all right, we will get this relation. So this kinematic viscosity becomes a dynamic viscosity, all right, because I multiply density in, and then I'll have this row here. Okay, so what is this this delta thing? This is called a Kronecker delta. That means that if i equals i is not equals to j, this term is zero. If i equals to j, this term is one. So, for example, let's say you have this, right? You have this. This is two velocities in the x direction, right? So i equals to j. So this is x u x and u x. So uh, it appears that i is equals to j. So you have this term, okay? This term, which is uh, delta u delta x, and then you have another time of delta u delta x. That's why you have two of this term. And then in this case, i is equal to j, meaning to say both are in the x direction because this is a u in the x direction. This is a u in the x direction. If both are equal to x, this one checks out. This one becomes 1. So we are left with this. Now, in the other case, let's say you have a different... Uh, different kind of velocity then then you will have okay I'll have this first term I have this term here so um, I'll have an xj uh, yeah xj there xj there being uh, well if j equals to the x direction I'll put x there then i equals to the z direction so this is velocity in the z direction and vice versa for this and now we look at the second term we find that i is not equals to j so the chronicle delta will just reduce to zero so this is how the chronicle delta works okay so for this we if you want yeah generally the idea is we perform experiments to find out what this mu t is all right uh, and then we try and use uh, graph fitting to find the best fit value of mu t and uh, of course k. So uh, that's the general idea behind turbulence modeling. And uh, I mean, a lot of the other models kind of built on this, on this assumption. For example, the k epsilon model. So the k epsilon model, we can talk about in the next video uh, where you have k equals to this this two, the product of these two, and then epsilon equals to this. Uh, and this is a this is one of the most basic models for uh, uh, turbulence modeling, and we can talk about that in the next video. And it builds upon the Boussinesque uh, relation that we have over here. So thanks for watching. Hope you learned something and uh, that turbulence modeling. You find turbulence modeling a little less scary once you find out. Oh, this is what we are doing from step one to step two. Yeah, so thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.